Welcome back to our podcast, Between Us and Y'all. I'm Yasmeen. I'm Nafis. And this is our podcast, Between Us and Y'all. And this is a podcast that is a safe space for mothers and sons to have conversations about different topics. Today we're going to be continuing the conversation about relationships. Last time we talked about intimate relationships as well as platonic. Today we're going to be talking about community and network relationships. And so... Anything you want to say before we get started? Um, also, the shirts that we're wearing today are Pumziko shirts, and it's a survival camp that is, what are the dates again? The dates are July 5th through the 11th. This is a camp that happens every year in the Georgia mountains, and Nafis has gone for how many years? I've been, well, at first I was a, a camper for about, I think, four or five. Mm-hmm. And then, five or six years. Yeah, five or six years, and the last two or three years I've been a counselor for numerous of of groups of campers so it's been definitely a new experience for me. And like we said last time we wanted to um, offer support to different groups that we support and Camp Umzico is a camp that's put on by the Malcolm X Grassroots Movement here in Atlanta and um, one of the youth um, portions of that particular organization is known as the New African Scouts. So this is a camp that is welcome, everyone's welcome to come, and, but New African Scouts get a discount if they attend um, the camp. My son has gone for, like we said, about six years, and these are the shirts that they put out in 2017. We'll have more information um, below if you want to know more about Camp Musico. All right, so we're going to jump right into our topic. Last time we were talking about, like I said, intimate relationships as well as platonic relationships. Um, it's important for us to have a conversation about community as well as networking because it's just important. We consider ourselves New African people, and if you are New African, you are a part of a community in some way. And so that's what we're going to be talking about today. All right, so I'm going to jump right into it. Um, how do you define community, Nafis? For me, how I define it is uh, a safe space for you to come where you need help or you need um, uh, a place where you need to ask questions, um, some things you don't know, or maybe to get just a place where you can just be able to find different things that you need or want, or like, you know, there's always somebody in the community that has what you need. Say for instance, somebody, you need an exterminator, or you need somebody that knows how to build gels, or something like that, you should be able to go into the community and ask that question and so hopefully somebody's there to give you the answer or to tell you, hey, I'm, I know how to do that. I, I'm skilled in that and I can give you my services. Okay, interesting. Yeah, I, I would agree with that definition. I'm glad that you have that definition because that shows that I've made a good example, you know, of developing a community or communities for you, you know. And so to add on to that definition, I would say, it's specific members that you can identify with who think like you and also do, do things that are similar to you. It could be your religion or it could be the way that you think as far as your culture. Or it may just be a group of people who save money together. You know, that's your community. Or, you know what I mean? We're a part of several communities and um, we're going to identify those communities in a minute. But before we do, how would you say that you've developed or how do you feel like I've developed the members of the community for you or do you feel like I did that or did it just happen um I feel like to a certain extent you develop some of the members for me definitely mm-hmm. telling hey you know Nafiz is out here and these are the things that he's interested in so definitely he'll try to reach out to you or you can reach out to him to show him that hey I'm here and I have these skills and I know that you're interested in it so just give me a call but also for me personally just taking my own steps to see what's out there and, you know, choosing things that I'm interested in or maybe I know, hey, my mom is interested in this, so I can definitely let her know also. All right, so before we continue, like we did last time, let's take about, let's name about our top five first people or organizations that come to mind when you think of community. Last time I started, so this time you start. When you think of community, what's the first thought that comes to your mind? Uh, the conscious community, so like the MXGM, um, Malcolm X Grassroots Movement, that group of people, and like Quilombo, 
it just that's that group of people for me. Okay, so me, I would agree. He, he took one of mine too. I say the Atlanta Masjid. Mm-hmm. Right. Uh, <laughs> I would definitely say. Um, Can't think. Just yeah, do it quick. Uh, people from school. From which school? Um, people from um, my high school, Academia Oaks. Okay. All right. Um, my community includes people from the West End Masjid. That's three for both of us. Now we both need one more. Um, uh, the, the art community that's here in Atlanta. Okay, and my last one would be ex- an extended network that has come from my friends or people that I've been in relationships with. Whatever communities that they had that I wasn't immediately a member of, I kind of became a de facto member by being, you know, re- in relationships with them or, you know, whether it was intimate or platonic. So it's important for you to define your community and know who they are and for them to know who you are also. Because sometimes people identify themselves with groups that they don't support and they don't know that they're, you know, not supporting <laughs> because they haven't identified what support is needed or what type of support they can offer. So So the next question is, how do you define a network? And how do you develop your networks? All right. So for me, um, my network would be similar to what you were talking about earlier when you were talking about resources. You know, my network is going to be made up of people who have certain skill sets and also things that they can do that I might be able to utilize that skill to pay them or to work with them to to, um, get some type of benefit from for example, you mentioned having an exterminator. We had an exterminator come out yesterday, you know, um, just routine thing. We don't have no, you know, infested house. So. <laughs> yeah, we try and keep on, stay on top of our stuff. But, you know, I, I was blessed to not have to go on Google to find a, a um, exterminator. I called one of my friends who was in my community, the Atlanta Master Muslim community, and said, hey, I need a... Um, uh, exterminator and he was like okay here's a number and the reason why I went to him first and one of the reasons why this is a part of how I define network is I should be able to not have to question this person's business sense whether they're gonna you know do me shady or whether they're gonna not do a good job because this network is defined by something more than just your skill you're a part of a community so when I call you and I say hey somebody referred me to you they're gonna know that you are a part of this network so that's a part of it for me. And then also, um, it's, it's defined by you keeping up with your end of the bargain. If I'm a part of a network, I should have something to offer too. Mm-hmm. I shouldn't just be a person that's just taking, calling on the exterminators and everything, and they can never call on me for something. So my name should be a name that comes up when somebody says, hey, do you know somebody who knows how to bake, or you know somebody who knows how to write, or write grants, or edit documents, or you know, analyze data, whatever it is that I'm going to do, <laughs> you know, they should be able to say, yeah, yes, me could help you do that. And they can give me the number. And as far as developing a network, um, before I answer, did you want to talk about um, what you, um, how do you find networks? I just wanted to go off what you said. I think it's a definite give and take. And I definitely want to say you should establish that before, like any other conversations, like also like, hey, I know that uh, I need this from you. I also want you to know that this is what I do provide. I also, like you know, like you say, like for me, I'm an artist, so I can paint, I can draw, I can sketch, you know, a logo out for you or you edit, write, write, you can code, edit a film or anything <laughs> like that for you. Mm-hmm. And the thing is, if you don't, if you don't tell those people that, then you know, they they will never know. They don't know what your skill set mm-hmm. is. So, okay. I definitely think you have to establish that. So there is that give and take so they're not just not expecting hey this person just calling me because they and not having to go outside of the network you know you can stay within your network and support your own first before you go out supporting someone else right so stay on top of your skills so we can offer you support because we don't want to have just one person who knows how to do something and you're the only janky person in the network <laughs> so there's that and you know, the next question you asked was how did how did i develop net, my network so for me, I've been very intentional over the years to try to go to my community first, you know, mm-hmm. when it came to something that I needed. And that was what I consider my network at first. You know, I'd go there and 
luckily within the community under the leadership of Imam Orthi Muhammad, there are a lot of professionals and there are a lot of people who make a lot of money and there's also a lot of people in political office and things like that or people who are, you know, knowledgeable about the religion without, you know, influence of Arabs because the community is predominantly African American. And I say that because it's important for you to know that your community relates and understands to your identity. And so within our community, we have professionals who understood that. So we have professionals who are black owned businesses and I can go to them and feel good because I know that when I spend money with them, they're gonna come back and give that money back in a certain way to the community. So that was one of my first steps. Then the next thing was to make sure that I was consistent with supporting them. If you're my exterminator, you're my exterminator. Are you supposed to come every three months? Then I'm gonna support you every three months. And I'm also connect you to other people too. And then make sure that they're aware, like you said, of what exists. Like if they need some help in a certain way, I'm gonna make sure that I connect, you know, that's exterminator if they have a need with someone else within the community. And I wanna be clear that, you know, my network is expansive. So it's not just the Atlanta Masjid. Like we said, we listed a good list of people. And within those people, there's a whole lot of people within those net, those groups and then the network. But like I said earlier, within my friendships and my relationships, they have their own branches of network. So it's just a big group of people. How about the networks you've developed? How did you do that? Um, I definitely, um, like, like I said before, I think for me, it definitely went both ways and also putting myself in certain situations. So it was like, oh, they know like what I can bring to the table and like for me like i will always like express like hey i can do this for you or i know how to do this so if you need anything then i'm here for you and try to make it make sure that they you know they know where their money's going to or they know who who they're dealing with and sometimes i feel like when you do that a lot of stuff can run smoothly and people are more comfortable like you know who you're spending your money with because you know people love their money and they want to spend it wisely and they don't want, like you said, I don't want to do business with somebody who's shady mm -hmm. or something like this. But if I know somebody in the community that knows how to do it, and I know them well besides of, you know, this or that, or what they do, then I know, hey, I know I'm in good hands. So I definitely think, like, I've always tried to be under, understand them as a friend and as a, like, a colleague rather than just looking at them as what they are just offering to the table. Okay. Is there a difference, in your opinion, between a network and a community? Yes and no, because I feel like community is more so like the people that like you can go to for like maybe intimate things and also things like in your personal matter. Mm -hmm. But sometimes your network can be like, say, for instance, someone that, you're doing business with. Yeah, it could be just like platonic. It's definitely just something like, hey, like, <laughs> you know, I just need help with this. And I, you know, can you help me with this or can I'll you pay you to do this? Yeah. And I feel like sometimes you don't have to mix those and because sometimes when you do mix those they can get very unorganized and very just it just sometimes it doesn't work okay i, I agree with you um with everything that you said um and sometimes like i said earlier my network and my community might be some of the same people you know but at the same time there are some people within my network like our exterminator that came out yesterday I have never seen that person other than when they come do the, the work, you know, at my house. But they're part of my network now, somebody that I pay for a specific thing. Whereas within the community, there's going to be people that I might go to for counseling, you know, that know me personally so they can offer me, you know, their skill set in a specific way because they know my life and they know my values, you know. So that's a little bit different. And also, you know, like I, when I was talking about my definition of community earlier, it's important to know that the people within your community understand your values and are living by those same values so that there is no, you know, clashing when it comes to making certain decisions, you know, whether that is based on, you know, how y'all are going to invest some money in something or how a divorce is going to happen or how a marriage is going to happen, premarital counseling or whether it's trying to, you know, hook you trying to hook your daughter up with my son, you know, do I know that we think the same, you know, or not? Because <laughs> it could be a big problem if we don't, you know, have some similarities. And so 
that's my different. I think there's a difference, but some of those things kind of overlap in some ways. Mm-hmm. Have you ever had to redefine your relationship with your community or network? Say that one more time. Have you ever had to redefine your relationship with your community or network? Yeah, um, absolutely. You know, I mentioned earlier, I'm a member of the um, of a community under the leadership of Imam Morthy Muhammad. I also consider myself a member of the leadership under Imam Jamal El Amin. And growing up, you know, there's just things that automatically happen because you're a child within a Muslim community. So, you know, the sisters do this and the brothers do that and they look out for the children in certain ways. And then when you get a little older, things are different. Things are expected of you. One of the biggest, um, the first times that I had to redefine my relationship with the community had to do with when I got divorced. I learned that there were two different you know, worlds when it came to the married Muslim sisters and the single Muslim sisters, you know, and so some of those people that I had grown up with and I was married and, you know, they treated me a certain way or I was invited to certain things, didn't, just stopped inviting me, you know, after I got divorced and I know y'all haven't invited me since, so still been, you know, unmarried, (laughs) (laughs) you know, since then, so um, I think that that was the first time I had to redefine a, you know, relationship. Another time had to do with when I started getting a little bit more ingrained in the conscious community in Atlanta. You know, I had to redefine my relationship between two communities I was a part of because I, I was realizing I was kind of living two different lives when I would come to the community at the Atlanta match. I mean, there's the Muslim community and then I would I'd be with the conscious community. I was feeling like I was having to, I was feeling like I had to change, you know, in a certain way. In reality, I probably didn't need to, but at the, I remember at first I was kind of redefining what that looked like. And the definition in the end was just, you know, be yourself, be consistent. You know, but also know that those two relationships exist and those two relationships need two different things. How about you? I definitely think I've had to, like, especially like first for me for the conscious community, mm-hmm. because before when I was younger, I used to be in a relationship. And then after that, you know, like you said, you get certain people act, to you, act with you in a certain way. And after that, you know, things do change. So definitely have to realize how do I go according to things and how do I do certain stuff? And also for me, the um, the art community in Atlanta is definitely having to make that much stronger. But make what stronger? The the co- the connection. Mm-hmm. Because so you know sometimes people don't know what you got to offer, but also like seeing what people's true intentions are, and you know what you know just trying to better that relationship with those people in that community. I want to ask you a little bit more about, you know, something you brought up about being in a relationship. You know, he's, my son's 20 years old and he was in a relationship years ago and he was younger, you know, and and growing up as Muslims, there was never really an idea of dating. So some of his friends used to get on me about, you know, mommy has me, you're always talking about marriage, but that's how I was raised, that relationships lead to marriage. It's not just leading to nothingness you know, dating forever and all that kind of stuff. Do you feel like that was hard on you growing up to have this idea of this person that I'm kind of, you know, in a relationship with, I should be thinking about what this person, how this, what type of mate this person would be as a husband or wife, you know, Mm -hmm. later down in the game when you're 13, 14 years old? (laughs) Um, For me, I've always, I've always, always had that question in my mind, but did... What question? The um, can you see yourself with this person in the long run? Mm-hmm. It's definitely in a more like you know like in a marriage or something like that. But I, in terms of when I'm messing around with the person or dating that person, I've it depends on when I ask that question for myself. Mm-hmm. Because if if I personally can't see myself with that person for a good amount of time, then I wouldn't you know pursue it because it's that's not you know I'm not here for the short term. I'm trying to be able to build or make something that's worth it and I feel like you know we should especially in this generation we should at least try to um, at least ask that question because sometimes we get into these relationships or we get into these things that we're doing and we realize hey this person not the person that I you know fell in love with or the person that I really caught feelings for 
So definitely, I've always asked that question for myself, even when I was 13 or 14. Did you feel like it was a lot of pressure? It was. I definitely think, me being young, I shouldn't have been asking that question. Why? I mean, because... You think you're too young to be thinking about marriage when you're 13 years old? I think so. Because then, you know, you definitely want to have certain experiences. And I feel like if you're constantly asking the question and you're always thinking that, oh, and when I get into this relationship with this person, I might get to marriage to this person. It can, it can might, it make you do certain things differently. But, I mean, for me, I feel like it makes, it makes a person more committed and it makes him, like, and more, and try to invest more because you, you know, that's, that's what you're trying to do. Mm. But. Interesting, because for me, I, I was doing that because my idea of community, like I said, has made people who have the same values. And so if you have somebody who's just trying people out, you know, not committed, not interested in thinking, how am I going to become a long-standing member of the community if I invest myself into a relationship with this person? Can we become elders one day in this community and give back in this way? Or are we just going to be leeches who take from the community? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Right. So that was my intention, you know, to kind of talk about those things very early on because I feel like you make different decisions with a person if you're thinking about this as a long-term thing as opposed to something just instant. You know, I'm just trying to get you know, my rocks off with this person and move on. Yeah. I think you think about it differently. You, like you said, you go about di- things differently. So, hope it didn't, wasn't too much pressure. Mm. All right, so, um, let me see what I want to ask next. What responsibilities do you feel like your community owes you? That's a hard one. Um, I definitely think a place where you can feel comfortable. Mm-hmm. They should make you feel comfortable. Mm-hmm. And be able to ask certain questions, being able to say, hey, you know, we need, we're need, we here for you. And if you need anything, that don't be afraid to call, mm-hmm. call on us. Because I definitely think you could be in a community with those certain conversations or certain things don't happen. And, you know, you might be biased or you might be like, well, I know I can't talk to this person because, you know, I don't know how they are blah blah so I feel like you should definitely make that happen I think the community should listen to like the the younger generations that are coming up and to advertise the things that they you know what they want and need so you can keep those people in those communities Mm -hmm. so say for instance a mass majority of this younger generation wanted to be politicians so you have maybe classes or you do different stuff where you would have politicians come in and maybe do mm-hmm. certain walk not workshops but something more interactive because I feel like a lot of this generation is more hands on mm-hmm. more hand- interactive instead of just this is what you need to do uh, facts 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 and do it so I definitely think that's something what about you well I mean first I want to talk about one thing that you just said it's interesting because it's good to know that youth are, are having an expectation of what, you know, they expect the community to provide. And my thing is, where does the balance come where the community is providing and you're actually respecting what the community expects of you? Because some people don't respect politics, you know, so you come to them saying, hey, I, you know, I know you were giving an example, but mm-hmm. you might say, hey, I want to get a class on politics. And they like, you know, we don't respect none of these people in politics. We're not teaching you that. Right. Or they might teach you, you know, some specific politics that have to do with it, what about, you know, the religion of, of Al-Islam or, mm-hmm. you know, something within the African community that's teaching history in that way. So it could happen. But for me, I feel like their community is responsible for identifying you as a member for one so if there's benefits that come from that you know i think that it's important for them to make you feel inclusive to make you feel welcome wherever your community spaces are and to actively have a voice in the broader community i think the community is responsible for hearing your voice and making sure that voice is a part of you know the collective voice that they offer to within the city or something like that whether it has to do with your neighborhood or, you know, your needs. You know, the Muslim voice in the city of Atlanta is very prominent, and that has to do with the local religious leaders like Imam Pleman or, you know, my younger brother, Imam Suleiman, paying attention, and, you know, their wives, of course, and other, you know, people within the community 
paying attention to what the community say that they need and then going to City Hall and speaking to the mayor or whoever it is to make sure those people know or within our neighborhoods so that they know what, what our needs are. I think um, it's important for a community to have resources also and if they don't have them to figure out a way to get them so that their members don't have to go outside of the community for it. Because it's one thing to say shop black, shop within your community and there's nowhere to shop. You know, or you have that one store that's super janky and they don't, you know, have nothing less than $500 or something like that, you know. So I think it's important for the community to offer that and um, for the community to offer classes too. So people can be skilled in lots of different areas. And if the community is not able to offer it, for them to offer a good recommendation of where they, a member could go to um, get those skills. And the next thing is, what respons what responsibilities do you owe to your community? I feel like you can't be a bum. <laughs> like you know, if you're gonna <laughs> if you're gonna be a member of a community, you know, you own up to your responsibilities. You know, mm -hmm. there's been times where I've had to step back, you know, from responsibilities that I've had because of my health or something like that. But it's important to communicate that so that somebody's not relying on you or having an expectation of what you're supposed to do and you don't come through, you know. Also, being proud to be a member of that community. If you are in public and, you know, somebody is defaming the name of your community, you should be a person that stands up for your community and you should be a person that speaks up and makes sure people are aware of, of that your community exists and that you have certain things that exist within your community. Not telling all your business, but at the same time, making people aware that we do this and these are our you know resources or our rights that we're living by you know so respect it i also think that um you're responsible for making sure your community is safe you can't be living in the community and you people living on your street you know just jacking people's cars and stuff like that and you're doing nothing you know i can say i'm grateful to have had a chance to live within the community of imam Jamil el -Amin, you know, in the West End of Atlanta, because everybody knew who he was and they knew who he was because he was respectful and he made sure everybody felt safe. And that wasn't, everybody in that neighborhood wasn't Muslim, but they knew what Islam was. They knew what our values were. And they also knew that they were safe if they were in that community because he made sure everybody felt that way. So, you know, we don't know every single person in our neighborhood, but we know certain people. We can wave at them, and I can trust that my neighbor across the street is going to watch my house and not let nobody break in, you know. But this is our little small neighborhood community, so I feel like that's my responsibility to also look out for their house, you know, when they're not home. Or if my neighbor's sick, you know, I make him some tea or something like that and make sure that I offer something, you know, to give back to make sure that I'm consistently being an active member and not just a dormant member. How about you? I definitely think, um, well, for me, I happen to ask, like, some of what are the responsibilities? Sometimes I feel like you can be in the community and you might not know what to do or how mm. to how to give back to the community and you're just there. And, you you know, you might be coming off as a leech or something like that, but that's not your true intentions. Mm -hmm. So definitely for, us, for me personally, I, I would try to ask the question or I've been asking the question of what can I do? For me, besides, you know, how I can present myself and, you know, what do you need from me and how how I'm here to help. Also, um, like you said, don't be a bum. <laughs> um, don't, don't just always be taken and feel like, you know, someone always has to help you because you definitely got to help others, you know. Yeah. You got to be respectful of what people are asking. You can't just be just saying oh no I can't do that and you there's no you just saying no for no reason you know I definitely feel like it's a give and take especially if you want your community to grow and you want your numbers to get bigger or get stronger you have to give back do you feel like it's been a lot of pressure on you or the community asks too much of you because I know I remember you telling me plenty of times like you do too much like you do way too much and people don't give back to you do you feel like somebody always has to give back in order for you to give not all the time, but I definitely think you should also be considerate, mm -hmm. you know, but not all, it's not always, you know, if I give something to you, you have to get something back. I don't think it has to be like that, but definitely you should always have the thought in your mind of, I know this person is doing this for me, 
to let me at least show them that I care for them in the way of, you know, of what I do. So I'll make you a shelf, you mm-hmm. know, or something or I'll, you know, do something for you. Some and, type of token of appreciation. Mm-hmm. So I definitely think, yeah, token of appreciation is definitely, I think, needed. Okay. All right. So last time when we were on our, our um, conversation, we were talking about intimate relationships. Do you feel like somebody that you're intimately um, involved with can be a part of your community or your network? Yes. Yes and no. The reason why I say no first because, say for instance, you guys do separate or something like that, then, like you say, like some people start to act different towards you, so that network or that certain part of the community has a big shift in it because of oh well you know we know that you guys are not together so like that so we know that we can't be asking you certain questions or we can't be asking certain things of you because I know that you guys are not together. But I also feel like, yes, you can, because still at the end of the day, the person that you're intimate with is still an individual, Mm -hmm. and it's still also in that community, and I feel like, you know, they might know some things that you need to know, and you just need to ask. So, hey, I know that we're in this relationship together, but hey, I know, do you know anybody that knows how to uh, zip line, you know, (laughs) something like that, and there might be somebody that knows how to do that. So, the only way you can know is if you ask. So, I definitely think in those intimate relationships and stuff like that you definitely have to ask because you know you never know so what do you think for me it's it's it's, it has to happen like i feel like if i can't be in a relationship with a person intimately if they're not a part of my community because they're not going to understand you know how i live it's going to be too much explanation about why do you do that and who are those people and why were those people in your yard you know or wh- why do you always call these people when you need something you know wh- you know thinking that it's something else going on as opposed to understanding what the whole process is you know so that's important for me and then as far as a network that's where the tricky part comes in you know cuz sometimes it's kind of hard to do business with somebody who you are have been intimate with because a lot of people don't know how to draw the lines you know and so for me I just make it a habit that I do not do business with exes, you know, at all. Um, I might refer somebody to them, and I'll do that for sure. But when it comes to me and them directly, I haven't had much luck with um, doing business with exes other than, you you know, your dad. (laughs) When it had to do with something that had to do with you, you know, that was a a little bit different. But like your dad has his own business, and I might refer somebody if they need that particular skill, you know, but... When it comes to, you know, networking and money that's involved, sometimes it can be a little bit different because I, I haven't really experienced a lot of people that can think that me calling you needing this particular skill is not me asking you for a date. You know, it's just you have this skill and I want to pay you to do it. So right. I, I think it's possible, but in community, absolutely, but networking, sometimes it can be a little bit tricky. Uh, do you consider immediate family as members of your community? Yeah, um, absolutely. Like, by default, you know, we we uh, are lucky to have, you know, members of my family all under the leadership of Imam Morthy Muhammad. And so we are part of that community, you know. And then my younger brother and I consider ourselves a part of the conscious community as well. So then we're a part of that community too, you know, but then I have brothers who are not members of that community, but if they came to town, they would be with me, you know, and it wouldn't be an issue for them to come or anything. But as far as the values and the ideology, they might not necessarily agree with that. And there's no expectation of them to, you know, so I think it's possible. Um, It can be a little tricky because we don't agree on everything, you know, Mm -hmm. For, for instance, I might have a conversation with one of my family members and they'd be like, what are you saying that you do now? We didn't grow up doing that, you know. Right. But I'm like, this is me. I'm an individual, you know, mm-hmm. and this is what I believe. And so this is a part of the community that I'm a part of. And so I think it's possible. What about you? Yes, I think so. I'm, <laughs> well, to my mom, I'm the only child. So mm-hmm. for me, this is all I've known. This mm-hmm. is being in a community, but also just with other siblings is we definitely have different lives we've been different you know we're in different communities so definitely like how you said like if my one of my siblings do come into town like hey I know you'll be spending time with me and I'll have you around I'll, you know I'll take you to the masjid or I'll take you around the things that I do because you know I want to show you that you know you're a, since you're a part of my family we're in this family together that you this community is you know 
here and for you because you you know you're my family member so do you feel like you've had to live two different lives because like with your dad you know we have two communities that we mm-hmm. live with the, with the masjid and the conscious community the african community but when you go with him it's not necessarily the exact same thing do you feel like it's been hard to kind of go between the two mm-hmm. at first at first i feel like i was having to um kind of live two different lifestyles mm-hmm. because definitely like you said being here in the conscious community and you know the magic community is much different than california mm-hmm. and so well also i haven't still really haven't really explored that in california so i can't really give like a real like really deep you answer know, it's just a bit different mm-hmm. but yeah like definitely i have as i've gotten older i know i realize like i can't really be trying to switch up or trying to live two lives because this is who I am and you know they just have to accept who I am and this is you know these are the things that I do and stuff like that and I feel like you know my family in California has been able to accept that Mm -hmm. it's good to know how to adapt though you know Mm -hmm. because like you were saying Atlanta and and Oakland California that's where we're from is there's a big difference you know in the communities that are, are there but one of the things that remains the same are the basics when it comes to Islam you know, we know we're going to pray together. We're going to do that the same. Somebody's going to take us to get something to eat or we're going to eat. You know, mm-hmm. something's going to happen with a conversation about, you know, our religion and something that has to do with something be about being productive. And at some point, somebody might want to make some money. And mm-hmm. we're all doing that based on the same guidelines. But the people are what's different. And with people comes differences. And the culture is definitely different. So there's that. So I think you've done a pretty good job, though, with adapting. You know, because you've had to adapt in a lot of different ways. So that's that. Have you felt like your community has ever supported you in making an, an important decision that you had to make? Did you feel like you had to, you went to the community and they helped you make a decision? Yes and no. Um, I'll say maybe before when I was planning the schools for college, mm-hmm. um, definitely going to the community both the mass shit, uh, Atlanta mass shit, and also the conscious community, and seeing what, you know, what people's experiences are, and also what to study, you know, because some people have been definitely, um, been telling me, oh, you should study this rather than study this, like, as of right now, I'm studying sociology, and there's been some people in the community that was telling me that you don't need to be studying that, that is, you know, that you're not going to get a lot from it, and it's not good for you and there's some other people like well that's really good for you because of you know how they you know they know me personally so they know how i do things and there's been other people that have been telling me well you need to go far from home you need to go either here or go there so it's definitely in terms of my really important decisions i definitely think they've come through and really helped me what about you before i answer do you feel like you've um that all of their advice was good or did you ever feel like somebody gave you some advice that didn't have to do with school about something else and you were like this is totally bogus i'll never listen to you again yes <laughs> I, I definitely um sometimes when someone gives you advice i did i definitely think you should always take the advice but also put it in in your own spin mm-hmm. because you don't want to just do something and you're not really understanding what you're doing it for mm-hmm. so definitely if someone do give, does give you advice or something like that definitely see how you can put it into your practice and how you do things so you're not just feeling like oh i'm doing this because this person told me to do it so and yeah there's been times when people have been telling me stuff like oh you don't need to be doing this or you need to do this and i'm like well i'm not gonna do that because you know they don't they don't they don't really know me or they just saying that because they've seen other people be successful in it mm-hmm. so yeah, that's my answer to that. All right, so now my answer, um, man, I've had this happen a lot. You know, growing up Muslim, like I said, in the Muslim community, there's this understanding that you get to an age where you're going to get married. You know, in, in Islam, there is what's called a wali, where a woman has what's called a wali. That's a friend or someone, usually it's a, immediately a brother or a father or some immediate male um, family member. Or if she doesn't have that, you know, maybe a representative in the masjid, an imam or something. But this person's responsibility is finding a suitable mate, you know, for this particular woman. And they would be able to do it because they know her personally. And they're also going to be able to speak to the partner in a way that she's, that's not going to be clouded by her type of judgment that might be clouded by, you know, you know, 
physical attraction or whatever. They're going to be looking at the specific things. Like, what does this dude do for a living? Can he provide? Is he religiously sound? Is he an abuser? Is he a drug abuser? You know, or is this dude a criminal? You know, all those types of things that would be looking out for that particular person. So that was the first type of decision that I went to the community for and got used to going to the community for. It got kind of hard, you know, at a certain point because I remember... Um, I've been married more than once, you know, and the first time I got married was really young to your dad. And with that, it wasn't really a community thing. My mom was like, here's what you're, here's who you're marrying, that's it, you know. But the second time I got married, I remember going and asking, you know, hey, what do you think about this person? And my um, brother at the time was in another country. My dad as well was in another country. So I had to use, you know, people that were local to kind of find out about him and ask, like, you know, who is this person? What is he like? You know, is he a bum? You know, or could this person be a suitable mate? So that was my first time. Um, that can be a tricky thing for a lot of people. I know a lot of sisters watching this would probably be like, that is the most sensitive topic because there's so many single sisters who feel like that they come to the community to tell them, I'm single, I'm here, I'm available, and they just get overlooked. You know, and the brothers that are interested in the same thing or come and say hey I need a wife and be married by you know the evening prayer of the same day <laughs> you know what I mean so it's definitely a double standard that exists but it's not something that I could really do about that other than make dua for our, my sisters um, another thing that I feel like I've had to go to the community for as far as making a decision had to do with you you know making decisions about you know, when you made a decision, went to the community to ask those questions about school, they came back to me to say, hey, I just want to let you know this is what I told Nafis. And if he goes with that decision, here's the people that are in that area that can protect him. You know, so it was always a follow up. So you made a decision in the end about Alabama a &M, you know, University. The first conversation that the people were having with me within my immediate conscious community was, oh, I got a brother down there. I got some people down there. Here's the number, get in contact with them so that Nafis has a community there. And that was my first thing. So those are the first things I could think about. And then also, you know, there were times where it wasn't necessarily people within my immediate community that I had to come to to ask a question. And I'm saying not immediate because it was people that were Muslim, but they weren't necessarily within the Atlanta Master community. And I had to go to them to ask, you know, what do you think about this and where can I go to to do this particular thing and they were able to offer me you know support so last question how do you go about asking your community for help when you need it that's a hard thing um, I'm lucky to be in a position where my younger brother is the leader you know of the national community well here in Atlanta so I could just text him you know say hey I need an oven or I need you know I need some help with this particular thing and he because he's my little brother you know is going to respond in a different way than some other people might receive you know response I'd say that he responds mostly to everyone but somebody watching this might not say the same thing you know there's a process to asking for things um usually but for me I just usually you know if I know who who has that thing I usually just ask them you know and also before I ask for things all the time I try to offer things so I could say, hey, you know, are you in a position right now to help with this particular thing? And do you need any help with anything? You know, so that, like you said earlier, you're giving back. You're not always taking. I definitely say in both communities, like, definitely um, not being afraid to ask because they, that's, they're there to help you. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, um, I, I, I guess for me, like, I've been just kind of nervous of asking because why? Uh, you feel like people say no a lot. No, it's just it's You're just afraid being of them yeah. No? It's being afraid of them saying no and also being stubborn of, of you know saying hey I want to figure this out on my own and I don't want people you know I'm just not wanting to get help and I understand like sometimes that's not good because you know there are people out there that are in the communities that do that stuff for a living or you know have those answers and it's just you know, waiting for you to ask. So I've definitely, as I've been getting older, been getting more confident in just asking those questions because they're, you know, all you can do is ask, so. Hmm. Oh yeah, well, as far as I'm concerned, it makes me think about a conversation I was having recently with a friend of mine about 
when the community falls short, you know, to a, a member and the member might be upset because they feel like you didn't come through for me. You know, mm -hmm. one of the things that's very important is communication and making mm -hmm. sure that a com the community knows what your needs are, you know, and not always about your needs, but what are you offering, you know? And also that you're you're not just concerned about yourself, but you're also giving back to specific people and making the community aware of what other people's needs are and actually showing up. You know, I think it's important for a community to have a process in place about how to respond to needs before the needs arise. Because mm -hmm. people, you know, show up to a community and say, hey, we have these needs. And the community's like, we have no idea how, how to offer you that. And they've never thought about it. And you got to think about that before something comes up like a funeral or somebody having a baby or, you know, mm -hmm. the things that happen in life. Like, I think there should be a process in place for the community to respond. So before we close, I want to ask one more question. Because mm -hmm. I know this particular podcast, my son and I, you know, thought that this was a good idea to develop this podcast because we have all these great conversations. Like how we're talking right now is how we talk at home. It might seem kind of heavy. You know, but I feel like it's had a lot um, on the impact of my son's development as well as mine as a parent. And so do you feel like it's been impactful to have a conversation about relationships? This was our first topic that we've had with our podcast. Do you think this was a good start? And if so, why? Yes, because I definitely think in everything we do, we all we always create relationships. Mm -hmm. And we also, you know, those relationships can last for a long time or they can be short. And I feel like if you're not able to sit back and debrief or and analyze those relationships and see, you know, what is going wrong or what's going right, then you don't, you know, if you're not doing that, then what are you doing? And so mm -hmm. I feel like um, talking about relationships is very important because, you know, everybody's always looking for a relationship, not always <laughs> in an intimate way, but also in a platonic, platonic way. Yeah. Or, you know, you're some people are looking for a community because, you know, they feel like they don't have one or mm -hmm. they... You know, they, you know, just open up people's eyes. So I definitely think relationships is definitely important and that always is always in our everyday conversation, you know, so I definitely think it was important. I totally agree. Um, when we were creating a list of topics we wanted to talk about and Nafis actually recommended that we start with relationships, I thought that was really powerful because, you know, this podcast is a thing that is supposed to be about conversations between mothers and sons. You know, and that's one of the relationships we can say, a lot of people say that is strained, you know, within our communities. A lot of people don't believe that healthy relationships exist, you know, for a long term. So I hear a lot of people telling me like, you and Afis are different. Like y'all are strange that y'all sit and talk and all the stuff like that. But the reality is, is it's actually not strange. It's, this is my child, you know, and so if I don't have a relationship with him and I'm not the first teacher of what relationships look like, where is he supposed to learn that, you know? So mothers and sons who are out there, I think it's very important for you to, if you have a strained relationship right now with your son, work on it. And if you need some ideas of how to work on that, me and Nafis are available to answer questions or offer ideas on how to develop that relationship. And if we're not able to answer, we'll find somebody who can. So that's the purpose of what we're here for today. So this has been Between Us and Y'all. We hope that what we've shared has been beneficial, as usual, and we hope that you join us next time. Thank you for being here, and thank you for listening. Peace. Peace.